We've mentioned this many times now, this weird duality of photons and matters having these wave and particle properties. And the double slit experiment is what captures that, what conveys where is this strange phenomena happening. So let's go, let's just dive right in. Here the setup is going to be, you shoot, say, an electron gun through two slits. And you're going to see what you measure on the detector screen behind. So let's start with the waves, all right? Let's start making a model of waves through a single slit. So you can think of sound waves, same thing with light waves. And you send a wave through, say, a small gap, say, a crack in the door. How, what happens to the sound waves? How do they propagate through the gap? So imagine, uh, cup your hands over your mouth and try talking to a person who is sitting on your left. Right? You're creating a directional speaker. So as you send out that wave, remember, you've, you've cupped your hands so that you are directing the waves. Here is the gap that you've made with your cupped hands. Is this how the sound waves look now? Is this how the sound waves look? No, because a person on your left will still hear you. They're still detecting those waves. Similar to trying to talk to someone through the gap of a door. They don't need to be standing right in front of the door to hear you. They could be on the edge or outside of it. So if this isn't how the sound waves propagate through a single tiny gap, here's what's really happening. The waves will propagate forward as what we call plane waves. They hit the gap and they start going out kind of like a circular pattern. These rays actually extend all the way out. So you get these circular patterns propagating forward. So going back to the analogy of cupping the hands over your mouth, you haven't created a directional speaker. You've just muffled the noise a little bit. The person sitting on your left to your right will still hear this part of the wave that's oscillating in that direction spherically outward. Now having, instead of having a single slit, let's have two tiny slits compared to the waves coming in. Well, what happens there? Well, just like before, the single slit, you're going to have waves that start doing this circular, spherically outward kind of directions. But that applies to both gaps. So you'll have a bottom gap that's producing this kind of conical wave out, and a top gap. So I'm going to color code this and superimpose both of them on top of each other. And this is what we see, this weird, complex picture. I'm using red for the top gap, or sorry, blue for the top gap, red for the bottom gap. And you'll have these things, these uh, intersection points, these two different waves now stacking on top of each other. And this creates what we call an interference pattern. Explicitly, we say these two waves, blue and red, are superimposed, stacking on top of each other. Now, if these were uh, light coming into a screen, you'd see bands of bright gaps, dark gaps. This is what we call a interference pattern. So let's cut over to uh, doing this actual experiment. We'll have a laser pointer going through a double slit. What you're looking at now is just a green laser pointer aimed at a chalkboard. And now what I'm going to do is introduce a double slit in front of the laser pointer. It'll be about a few fractions of a millimeter distance uh, between these two gaps here. Let's pull that in and watch what happens to the dot. It's going to disappear first because I'm blocking it. And now the slit is going to come into view. So let's... I've cut it off. Here comes the double slit. There you go. What you are seeing now, these big bands here, all right, just let me point this. You see a nice big band, then a little gap. And a band, and a gap, band, gap. And it keeps going in both directions. This is what we call the double slit interference pattern. And you can only get this with waves. Only waves can demonstrate this property. It's the wave going through both slits simultaneously and interfering with itself. So, there's your double slit experiment. Right? No slits. Double slit. 
The band you just saw on the double slow experiment with the laser pointer is a result of what we can call constructive and destructive interference. And it's just the two different waves adding on top of each other. So let's focus on constructive. Here's wave one, and here's the second wave, wave two. And we'd say that they are in phase with each other. Basically, as one goes down, so does two. Now, if I stack one and wave on top of each other, mathematically, it would just be adding them together. Here, I have a down spot. I have a down spot again, and so it's further down. And so these two waves would constructively interfere. They add on top of each other, making a bigger amplified result. Now, for destructive interference, here's wave one, here's wave two. Now, wave one is at a peak Wave 2 is at a trough, and vice versa. So when these two waves stack on, choppies, stack on top of each other, this peak will cancel out with this trough. And same here. So that the entire motion, these waves are effectively canceled. They're negated. Uh, mathematically, we'd say these two waves are out of phase, and the superposition of them cancels each other out. Once again, I believe animations help us visualize this. So here we're going to flip on an animation showing constructive destructive. These will be two waves that are shifting between being in a phase and out of phase. So look carefully. Red and blue are the two waves that are traveling, and they are being moved in such a way that the red wave and the blue wave are going from in phase, out of phase. In phase, out of phase. Red is it's a superposition. Red is the two waves stacked on top of each other, how they're constructing, or how they're adding up. So when they're in phase, you get maximum constructive interference, and you get a big spike, uh, an increase. When they're out of phase, it cancels out, and the red line goes flat for a moment. So as these two waves go across each other, constructive interference, destructive, back to constructive. That's what's happening when we send our waves through the double slit. Bringing up an animation of the double slit experiment, you see the plane waves coming in from the left. Now the yellow lines represent where the gaps, the slits are going to be. You see that rippling effect. This should remind a lot of you of, say, water waves. You can actually create this double slit wave interference uh, in a pool of water. You just have to play with two things uh, splashing around. So you see the spherical waves coming out and on the screen, regions of intense spots of constructive interference and dark spots of destructive interference. We've seen what waves will do when they pass through a double slit and now we want to switch transition over to what particles will do. So in this we're going to say you have a bucket full of baseballs and think of it at like you're at some of those circus games where you're throwing the baseball through a grate with two slots through it. And what is the range on the screen that you're going to hit? So this is going to be our example of classical particles through the double slit. And you can probably picture it right now. You throw one ball, you hit ball, goes through the right slit and you land directly behind it. Throw another one through the left slit. Right, directly behind it. Keep going, do this a couple hundred times, and you'll have just this slotted out regions here where where the ball's trajectory through the slits is just directly behind. Maybe a little bit of variance in the width here, but this is the range that you're going to get. So when you throw particles, classical particles, through a double slit experiment, you're just going to find regions behind it where the balls land. Now, now instead of baseballs, baseballs, let's shrink, shrink it down, down to electrons. electrons. Same, Same principle. principle. We're, We're going to have, have a particle that's going to be launched, passing through either the left slit or the right slit, and it will land on the detector screen in these regions that we've picked out from our particle perspective. So we shoot one, and it lands behind the left screen. Shoot another, right screen, shoot another, and it will land between not expected. Could be experimental error. Whatever. Keep going. Back behind the right screen. Another off to the left. Not where we predicted it would be. Do this experiment 
hundreds of times, shoot thousands, shoot millions of electrons, and this is the pattern you're going to see on that screen now. Single electrons are passing through one of the double slits, passing through one slit, and creating a interference patterns. Bands of bright spots, high intensity, low, high, low. So even though we are shooting particles through single slits, we are shooting these things one at a time on the detector screen, it'll register a particle hitting it. The electron itself behaves like a wave. It will have wave interference properties creating these superpositions of constructive interference, destructive interference. De Broglie was one, of, was one of the first men to predict this. And he, these are examples of later experiments. The black, every time you see a white dot, that is a single electron passing through the double slit and hitting the screen, illuminating it. And after you run that long enough, you see the bands of interfere, of double slit interference patterns. So this comes down to what we mean by that wave particle duality. The electrons are particles. A single particle is hitting the screen here. One particle, one particle, and so on. But when you do this over the big scheme, sum up all of these things, what we find out is that these particles are waves interfering with themselves, creating the double slit pattern. What de Broglie uh, postulated was that the wavelength of these particles goes as Planck's constant divided by their momentum. The Think of the momentum as the speed of these particles. The faster they move, the smaller their wavelength, the more particle-like they behave. So this is a cursory introduction to what is the double slit experiment and highlights the strange craziness that is the wave particle nature of the universe. A frequent question that I'll be asked is, well, which one is it? Why, why is it both? Can we just narrow it down? And my answer will be that, take the electron. The electron is whatever an electron is. We have mathematical models. We have ways to try and understand and interpret what's happening. And depending on the experiment we're doing, it will behave more as a particle or as a wave. So we are trying to apply tools to understand the universe. But ultimately, the electron is an electron. So there is a plethora of material worth exploring on this. And I highly encourage you to if you have more questions. Because this is a very fascinating, deep subject matter.